hey guys, welcome to the video. You probably didn't expect me to hit you with the workout and commentary right from the start since I don't usually do that, but I thought I would change it up for this video and let's get to it. So this is what you're watching, my latest squat workout on 531. It was the fives week, so you will see me work up to an AMRAP set of 340 pounds, I believe. As far as my accessory lifts, I was doing 10 to 12 reps this week, so that's what you'll see on the leg press, Romanian deadlifts, and everything else that I take you through in this workout. And during the commentary, what I wanted to discuss is what you saw in the thumbnail, and is it's about beginners. So a lot of people actually ask me, are they still a beginner? And I mean, it's not really a very simple answer, I guess, like nothing's really a simple answer. And I guess the relevance of being a beginner is because when you are, if you're a complete beginner just joining the gym, no matter what you do, you're going to get what they call noob gains, where just because your body is not used to any kind of training stimulus, doing anything is better than nothing, and because of that, you're going to make progress no matter what you do. Unfortunately, when people start working out, they go into the gym before they really know what they're doing, so they don't get to maximize their noob gains, and although they make gains, if they knew what they knew while they were more advanced, when they were a beginner, they would have been able to make so much faster progress in the beginning. Unfortunately, that only happens to very few people because like I said, most people just go into the gym before doing any kind of research and before really knowing what they're doing and they're kind of fi uh, figuring it out along the way. Um, so today is Labor Day while you're watching this. Um, I do have my ebook sale today for uh, Labor Day. I'm going to put the code on the screen. Link is in the description box below. Use the code LABOR. You'll get 25% off. And I'm just mentioning that because it's the uh, geared for beginners. And it's basically everything I wish I knew before I ever joined the gym so I could have saved myself a lot of time and a lot of aggravation. So what makes somebody a beginner? Now, it's, there's no specific checklist that makes somebody a beginner, but there's three general... Here's three guidelines, I guess you could say, that could help you decide whether or not you're a beginner. So if in the gym, I don't like to give a specific lift, but if you're not able to bench 185 pounds for at least a few reps... If you're not able to squat at least 225 and deadlift 225 for a few reps, you're probably still a beginner. I mean, maybe you started out from a very, very um, weak point and you actually, maybe you actually increased your bench and squat over 100 pounds already to get to that point. So maybe then you're not a beginner. But generally, if, you can, if, I, if I see someone who can't even bench 185 for a few reps, can't squat 225 for a few reps and deadlift 225 for a few reps, I would say you're probably still a beginner, but there's still more to it. Um, because being a beginner is not just about a physical strength, it's also about your mindset and your level of knowledge. So in terms of diet, if you have no idea what your macros are, or you have no idea how much you need to eat um, to either gain or lose weight, and basically you're just eating whatever and you don't really know how to adjust it to reach your goals, I say you're still a beginner. And this could be someone who's been lifting for one year, six months, and five years. If you still don't know if you have no concept of nutrition, no concept of how much to eat to reach your goals, you're probably still a beginner, and that, and you could be a beginner even if you've been lifting for a while. I mean, there's different ranges of beginners, and just because you've been necessarily putting in time for a while doesn't mean you're not a beginner anymore. And another thing, the third thing I would say that makes someone a beginner is someone who prioritizes supplements over diet and training. So even if you've been lifting for a while, if you think that you need to take a certain supplement to reach your goals, uh, you're a beginner because you still have some learning to do. So those are three general areas that I guess you could say um, that kind of, in my mind, make somebody a beginner. Like I said, there's no, the relevance of that is really, um, I guess not much because everyone wants to say, oh, you're a beginner for six months. But you know what, you can't look at it in that way because someone who's been doing everything correctly for six months might not even be a beginner after six months whereas someone who's been working out for three years if they've never done anything correctly they could benefit from beginning from getting on a beginner routine because they've never really maximized um, those benefits so basically if you are a beginner what should you do i always recommend a full body routine for a beginner i do believe full body is the best way to grow in your very uh first six months to a year of training and i do mention that in the ebook um, as far as the diet, I mean, the diet never really changes whether you're a beginner or not, but when you first get into this, it's going to take some experimentation to really figure out how many calories your body needs to grow, and everyone has to go through that, but the earlier you can do it, the earlier you learn your body, the better off you will be in the future. So that's just what I wanted to go over this. Are you a beginner? If you're even asking yourself if you're a beginner, you probably are. 
Um, if you've never done any kind of full body routine, you could probably could still benefit from it. And if you have no idea how much you're eating and you think supplements are the key to everything, you still are a beginner. So anyway, the workout footage is wrapping up. Use the code LABOR if you want to get 25% off my ebook. Um, since I hit you with the workout footage in the very beginning, the rest of the video is not workout footage. It will be where Paul and I went to dinner. We went for burritos to a place called Taco Joe's. You might have heard of it, might have not. The burrito was massive. We also have some Halo Top, or she has Froyo. I have Halo Top. So if you're interested in the rest of the video, stick around. Hit the thumbs up either way. I'd appreciate that. Subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you guys in the next video. And have a happy. hope you had a happy Labor Day weekend. All right, so we just pulled up to Taco Joe's. For those of you who, who don't know what it is or have one near you, it's kind of like a Chipotle, but they're actually not very cheap with the ingredients. They don't charge extra for guacamole. So I'm going to get a burrito. Paul is going to get a bowl. It's always like loud in there, so I don't, I'm not going to film too much, but I'll show you what we get, and we'll see you inside. This thing is massive. Oh, my God. I'm going to put it right next to your face. Is it still rolling? Yeah. It's huge. Everything is loaded up on this bad boy. It's busting out of his clothing too. Let's open it up and take the first bite. Look at that. here is a burrito with chicken, rice, pico, guac, black beans, there's no cheese and no sour cream and it's delicious and that is basically the same thing in bowl form. Anyway, it is freezing in here. We're going to put the camera down because I can tell this is going to fall apart and I need to really concentrate. So we will see you afterwards in the car and then we're going to go for burrito. Alright, so that burrito was massive. It probably looked big on camera, but it was bigger in person. It absolutely fell apart after I put the camera away. But that's why I like this place, because big burritos are better burritos. Chipotle needs to learn from that. So we are going to go for Froyo. If you saw the last few videos, you know I won't be getting Froyo. I'll just be getting free samples. Paul will be getting Froyo. And I still have to go through some Halo Top. I think we have like another 12, 13 pints left. So in a few more months, I'll start getting Froyo again, unless I get more Halo Top. So, not gonna film inside there, but we'll see you at home. And we got cookies and cream Halo Top with, this is actually a 16 handle spoon. They cheaped us out with a regular spoon. So, gonna eat this. Gotta take a spoon on the camera so you believe that I eat it. And like usual, cookies and cream Halo Top is the best flavor. But anyway, that's gonna wrap up this video. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. I appreciate you guys watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one.